Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. We're talking about an important skin finding that can occur in certain types of cancer that we don't want to miss. And that particular skin finding is known as Lesser Trela sign. The problem is that this particular skin finding can appear just like a benign condition known as seborrheic keratosis, which can appear exactly the same, but there's gonna be important distinctions. We're gonna discuss all those in this lesson. So let's first talk about Lesser Trela sign. So this is going to be a rare finding, so it's not going to occur as often as we would see with seborrhea keratoses. The median age of onset is going to be 61 years of age, and this particular skin finding is what we call a perineoplastic syndrome or a perineoplastic dermatological finding that indicates or is due to an internal malignancy. We'll discuss all of those different types of cancers that can cause the sign in the next slide. Now, the very similar condition of seborrheic keratosis is going to be different than lesser trela sign. This is actually going to be what we colloquially call age spots. It begins to occur after the age of 40, so these can start to show up on people's bodies after the age of 40. And the prevalence of these increases with increasing age. And what we do know is that there's a higher prevalence of these particular skin lesions in patients with decreased skin pigmentation. So the lighter skinned the person is, the more likely they're going to get these as they get older. So you might be wondering how we're going to distinguish these two, but we will later on. And the reason that distinguishing these two is important is because lesser trait law sign is indicative of an underlying internal malignancy, whereas seborrheic keratosis is a benign condition that occurs in a large number of patients as they get older. So these two conditions are essentially the same condition with slightly different pathophysiological mechanisms, but there are important distinguishing factors between both of these, and that will help us distinguish whether or not someone has lesser trait loss sign or seborrheic keratosis. We'll discuss that later on in this lesson. So before we talk about the distinguishing factors between lesser trait loss sign and seborrheic keratosis, let's discuss what types of cancer can cause lesser trait loss sign to occur. So some of these include stomach cancer or gastric adenocarcinoma. We can see it in colon cancer or colorectal carcinoma. We can see it in breast cancer. We can see it in prostate cancer. We can see it occurring in pancreatic cancer, liver cancer, or hepatocellular carcinoma. We can also see it in lung cancer and in kidney cancer as well. There's other types of cancers that can lead to this particular skin finding, lesser trait loss sign. These include lymphoma. We can see it with bladder cancer. And we can also see it in other types of gastrointestinal cancers like esophageal cancer. And what is important to realize is that the types of cancers that are most commonly going to cause this particular skin finding are the gastrointestinal cancers like stomach cancer, colon cancer, and esophageal cancer. So those are going to be the most common cancers that lead to this particular skin finding. Now let's discuss some of the pathophysiology behind why these particular skin lesions occur. So the entire pathophysiological mechanism is unknown in both seborrheic keratosis and in lesser trait loss sign. The pathophysiology is similar between the two, but there is some slight differences, and we'll mention them here. So both of them are going to start out with immature keratinocytes. Keratinocytes are skin cells and also melanocytes. Melanocytes are cells that produce pigment. They are pigment producing cells, so that gives us that darkened color of the lesion. And what is going to happen is that we're going to get what we call clonal expansion. So one cell is going to produce many. It's going to produce essentially a clump of cells. Now, the reason this occurs in seborrheic keratosis is going to be similar, but again, different. So in seborrheic keratosis, the exact mechanism is not entirely understood as to why this occurs, but we can see genetics playing a role. And we can also see an influence of fibroblast growth factor receptor 3 or FGFR3. So that's going to be important in the pathophysiology of seborrheic keratosis. The difference in lesser trait loss sign is that there is a tumor. Now the tumor is going to produce certain other components. These are going to include cytokines. These are cell signaling molecules and also growth factors. There's a list of growth factors that tumors can produce. These include epidermal growth factor alpha, transforming growth factor alpha, amphiregulin growth hormone, and FGFR3, similar to what happens in seborrheic keratosis. So whether or not a tumor produces certain cytokines or certain growth factors, these cytokines and growth factors are going to influence certain immature keratinocytes and melanocytes to grow and multiply. So where do some of these particular skin lesions occur? Now, both seborrheic keratosis and lesser trail sign are going to occur in similar locations in the body, including the torso and the back, 
So we can see most commonly on the back. We can see it in the arms. We can see it on the scalp. And we can see it on the legs in some cases, although more rare, it's going to be mostly in the upper body. But what's important with regards to both Seborrhea keratosis and Lester Trelaw sign is that they do not occur on the palms of the hands or the soles of the feet. So in both Seborrhea keratosis and Lester Trelaw sign, these skin lesions are going to start off as less pigmented, smaller, and flat lesions. So they can start out more like a macule. Macules are small, flat skin lesions less than 10 millimeters in diameter. And then over time, the skin lesion will grow, it becomes darker, it becomes more pigmented, it becomes larger, although it slows down over time, it becomes raised, it can be described as velvety and varicose, so it can be velvety appearance, it can become quite thickened, and they become more numerous over time as well. Now, we'll discuss one difference here with regards to separated keratosis and lesser trela sign. The difference with lesser trela sign is that this process occurs much faster, so it can occur abruptly where many of these skin lesions can occur very quickly and the progression can occur very quickly as well. So that is one distinguishing factor here. Now when we look at both of the types of skin lesions, both seborrheic keratosis and lesser trela sign, they have certain types of characteristics including that they are papules and plaques. So a papule is a raised skin lesion less than 10 millimeters in diameter. A plaque is a raised skin lesion greater than 10 millimeters in diameter. So they can be either less than 10 millimeters in diameter, greater than 10 millimeters in diameter. They're going to become raised as they get older or over time. They're going to be well demarcated, which means that the skin lesion stops abruptly. So there's just an abrupt change between normal skin and the skin lesion. They're going to be hyperpigmented. So they're going to be darker than the surrounding skin. They can be anything from light tan, brown, and black in coloration. They are often going to be described as waxy or greasy, round to oval in shape, and they can look like they've been stuck on. So they look like a piece of something that has been just stuck on the skin of a patient. Now let's discuss some of the specific features of lesser trela sign. So these are going to be what distinguishes between seborrheic keratosis and lesser trela sign. So the difference, and one of the major differences with regards to lesser trela sign, is that it is a sudden onset of many seborrheic keratoses. So if we were to look at a benign case of seborrheic keratosis, we may get one lesion, a couple lesions, and slowly, slowly over time, many years, we can start to see more popping up and they start to get darker and thickened. But with lesser trela sign, it is a sudden onset of many all at once, and they can become very darkened very quickly. Another important difference with regards to lesser trela sign and seborrheic keratosis is that the lesions in lesser trela sign are often going to be pruritic, meaning that they're going to be itchy. Not always, but more often they're going to be itchy than compared to seborrheic keratosis. In some cases in seborrheic keratosis, we can see some patients complaining of an itch, especially if some of their clothing rubs against the lesion that can cause some itching. And what we're often again going to see is that there's going to be a rapid increase in size and number of lesions. So not only is there a sudden onset of many lesions, but we're going to see them increasing in size rapidly. So that's going to be important as well. So again, these are the main specific features that can distinguish between lesser trela sign and seborrheic keratosis. Again, if patients ha start to have a few and they slowly increase in number over years of time, that's going to be more indicative of seborrheic keratosis. In the case of lesser trela sign, if they have one of those underlying cancers like gastric adenocarcinoma or colorectal cancer, and they all of a sudden you know, they didn't have any before, and then all of a sudden they have many of these lesions occur abruptly. That is going to be very suspicious for a clinician to think that they have lesser trela sign, and then they need to have some testing for a potential underlying malignancy. Now, what we can often see is that because malignancies can occur later on in life, patients, as they get older, as mentioned before, seborrheic keratoses are something that can occur in patients as they get older, the prevalence increases, the number increases, and the lesions become darker over time. But the problem too is that as patients get older, they're more likely to get cancers. So how can we distinguish then? So say if a patient has no cancer at all, they are in their 60s or 70s, 
and they have a bunch of these seborrheic keratoses and they get one of those underlying internal malignancies, what will happen? Actually, what will happen is even if they have a ton of these seborrheic keratoses skin lesions, if they have an underlying malignancy that has developed, they can have rapid increases in more number of these lesions. So not only may they have multiple already, but they will see a rapid increase in amount that start to pop up and also in the darkening of the ones they may have already. So that is also something to be very attentive to, especially in older patients with seborrheic keratoses. If we start to see change, a, a rapid increase in more seborrheic keratoses, then that is also another sign that this may be lesser trade loss sign. And then one other important finding that we can see in lesser trade loss sign is other perineoplastic syndromes. Since if a patient already has a cancer, that cancer's producing certain compounds, they may have other perineoplastic dermatological findings. And that is actually what can occur in patients with lesser trade loss sign. So in fact, 20% of patients with lesser trade loss sign will also have what we call malignant acanthosis nigricans. Acanthosis nigricans appears like this. It's thickened, hyperpigmented skin lesions that have a velvety appearance and that occur in particular parts of the body, including intertriginous areas. This is what we call intertriginous areas, anything where skin rubs on skin. So axillae, so that's the armpit or in the groin. So if we start to see this thickened, darkened skin plaque in the armpits or in the groin, and they also have had an increased number of seborrheic keratoses, then we really start to think this is lesser trade loss sign. This particular skin finding would then be malignant acanthosis nigricans. We call it malignant acanthosis nigricans in the case where it is involving uh, underlying cancer because there is also a benign form of this particular skin finding simply referred to as acanthosis nigricans, which we can see in patients who have type 2 diabetes and other associated conditions like polycystic ovary syndrome, for instance. Now, if a patient does have some of these skin findings, if we were to actually treat the underlying cancer, that's often going to be the way to deal with a lot of those skin lesions that occur with lesser trade loss sign. 50% of patients will have resolution of their skin lesions if the cancer is dealt with. And in other cases, after the cancer has been dealt with, we can use other methods to remove some of those for cosmetic purposes. But other than that, those particular skin lesions are not going to be detrimental to health, for instance. So that's also something to point out here as well. I hope you found this lesson helpful. Please check out my full lesson on seborrheic keratosis for more information. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And please consider joining as a member to access members only content. That will be a great help for the channel as well. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.